I am Manaharan Muthuswamy. I am the interim dean and director in the School of Agriculture, Fisheries and Human Sciences, University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. First of all, I am pleased to welcome you for the 62nd Annual Rural Life Conference. Probably you all know that um, the Rural Life Conference was started in 1950 with only 15 participants. Fast forward, 2018, we have 325 people pre-registered for this conference. Also, many people just walked and you know, they did registration. So imagine the impact that the Rural Life Conference has created over the period of time. The theme of today's conference, innovations for farms, families, and communities in changing times is very timely. As changing times require innovative solutions to the problems that we face in rural Arkansas. We have lined up great speakers and uh, workshops. We have our chancellor, Dr. Lawrence B. Alexander, and the newly appointed dean of the University of Arkansas, Dale Bumbers College of Agriculture, Food and Life Sciences, Dr. D.Q. Fields here. Dr. Walter Hill, Dean College of Agriculture, Environmental and Nutrition Sciences, Tuskegee University, will present the prestigious Simon Alexander Halley Memorial Lecture. For decades, Dr. Hill has been one of the 1890 land-grant universities most innovative and distinctive leaders. We are extremely proud and fortunate to have Dr. Hill here. Each year, we dedicate the conference to someone who has contributed significantly to Arkansas and UAPB. This year's recipient, Mr. Kenneth Lee Sr., is also here. Reverend Clark Thomas of New Salem Baptist Church is here to provide invocation. And uh, of course, our luncheon speaker, Dr. Alton Thompson, also here. So I welcome you, everybody, uh, for this conference. The program will proceed as per the agenda printed in the book. I request each speaker to come forward when their turn comes for presentation. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome our Chancellor, Dr. Lawrence B. Alexander, to give his greetings. Chancellor, Dr. Alexander. Thank you, Dr. Manaharan. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2018 Annual Rural Life Conference. It is so great to see all of you here today and to have all of you here join us for this great occasion. As you know, or as some of you may know, the Rural Life Conference was initiated by the late Professor Simon A. Haley, Director of Agriculture, and the conference has been a part of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff for some 62 years. We've been providing beneficial information that contribute to the improvement of our communities, our state, and our nation. As Dr. Mata Hanan said, the theme of this year's conference is innovations for farms, families, and communities in changing times. All of these workshops, 
and efforts that have gone forward today contribute to sustainable communities and they aim to maintain and improve the economic, environmental, and social characteristics of the area so that residents can continue to lead healthy, productive, enjoyable lifestyles. Living a healthy lifestyle means adopting behaviors that positively impact well-being. Therefore, it's imperative that we continue to endorse and offer opportunities that bring awareness to healthy living and methods to building sustainability in our communities for the betterment, for the betterment of humanity. Because of the vested interests of our faculty, our staff, community supporters, all of our stakeholders in the agricultural industry, and in collaboration with agricultural, educational, and service agencies from across our state and nation, we continue to share information relative to agricultural production, family, and farm management, enterprise development, and other related su subjects. And through our collective endeavors, we hope that our partnerships and our resources, that we're able to provide opportunities that will further enhance the development and empowerment of our rural Arkansas communities right here at the Rural Life Conference. I'd like to recognize and thank all those who had a hand in putting on this great conference and on planning this day. Uh, special thanks to uh, Dr. Mana Hadron, who's the Interim Dean of the School of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Human Sciences, and uh, to our program chair this year, uh, Dr. Njue. Thank you to both of them for their hard work and dedication. We appreciate all of you for coming out and joining us today. Uh, we thank you, those who have traveled both near and far, and for those who have not been to Pine Bluff in a while, welcome back to Pine Bluff. And if this is your first time, welcome to our great city. Thank you and have an enjoyable time here today. As we get ready to pray, we ask you to pray within your own spirit while I pray out aloud. Shall we pray? O oh, gracious God, the maker, the ruler, sustainer, the navigator of all of life, we come before thy throne of grace with humbleness. We petition you now for your grace, your mercy, for your direction for this conference. We pray, God, that as you just navigate this universe, that you take this conference and that you navigate every move and every thought, every action. We pray that you be with every speaker, every attendee, that they will receive what they've come for. God, we pray that you will bless and just pull this community together, and we'll be mindful to give you the praise. And God, we also ask you now to bless the leaders of this conference, that you would endow them with the understanding and all that they need to make sure that uh, this conference will be beneficial and help them, God, as they plan for upcoming years. Again, we thank you for everything that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, while the choir is getting set, uh, our first selection will be The Last Words of David by Randall Thompson. It comes from 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter, verses 3 and 4. The text is, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Our second selection will be a spiritual, Elijah Rock. I want to introduce our assistant choir director and voice teacher, Mr. Andy Book.
Good morning. Um, it's a pleasure uh, indeed to be here and to have the opportunity to uh, greet you this morning. Uh, thanks to Dean Monaharan and Dr. Njue for inviting me to uh, greet you for a few moments and uh, give a few remarks. Um, the program lists me as um, the department chair at Auburn University uh, in, in Alabama, but as of May 15th, I will be joining the University of Arkansas, serving as dean of the College of agriculture, food, and life sciences. So, thank you. So, really looking forward to this opportunity, very humbled by the opportunity, and just wanted to give you a little bit of my background and, and talk about, you know, kind of what we'll be doing when we get here. Um, so, I'm originally from a small town in Louisiana, Winsboro, Louisiana. Uh, grew up around agriculture. Um, up until last year, my dad and I raised show steers for in 4-H club cabs for kids, and I still show quarter horses, so uh, still deeply, truly involved in agriculture. I have three sons who are also heavily involved. I've had the opportunity, or this uh, unique opportunity, to spend time, or a significant amount of time, at five different land-grant uh, institutions, uh, two 1890 and three 1862 institutions which has given me a broad perspective on the opportunities and challenges that exist uh, throughout the entire land-grant system. Um, started off at Southern University as an undergraduate student, uh, left there and went to University of Missouri uh, to do my master's. Um, after that, I was um, afforded the opportunity to work at Florida A&M University as director of their 2501 program, or their Small Farm Outreach Program. Did that for three years and then decided to go back to Louisiana State University to do a PhD. As Soon as I left LSU, I uh, went on to Auburn and spent 16 years at Auburn University, um, five years as department chair at Auburn University. And so this is, is kind of giving me a, um, 
a good perspective to look at, you know, opportunities that, that exist and, and how we can kind of forge some partnerships. So looking forward to coming to the great state of Arkansas and exploring the possibilities to partner with uh, UAPB. And, and notice I said partner, not compete. Uh, I think uh, competition by the very nature of the word means that there's going to be a winner and a loser. Uh, so we're looking at opportunities to partner. I uh, think effective partnerships are those that lead to mutual benefits. And, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, I give you a quote from, from my favorite book, and that, that quote says, two are better than one, for they have good return for their labor. For if one falls, his brother will lift him up. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. And if y'all don't recognize that, that's from Ecclesiastes. So um, looking forward to being able to form that uh, partnership and kind of form that bond here at, um, uh, in Arkansas. Uh, just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. Looking forward to getting here and going to work and hitting the ground running. I've, I've spent a lot of time in the state already uh, getting to know people. That's one of the things I want to do is start uh, from the beginning uh, forming effective relationships. I think that uh, a strong program runs on relationships. Um, that, that, will, that is what I think will, will lead to the overall success. So um, just want to let you know that I'm accessible and grateful to be here and, and looking forward to uh, being part of the, the system here in Arkansas. Thank you very much. It is my honor to introduce our speaker for the morning, Dr. Walter A. Hill. In a real sense, we are, we are coming 360 degrees today because Walter is actually from Arkansas. Although he's been in Alabama for a long time, he's still from just outside of Little Rock. Okay, Dr. Hill is professor, vice provost, and dean of the College of Agriculture, of Agriculture Environmental and Nutrition Sciences at Tuskegee University, and the director of the USDA 1890 programs at that institution. He has served as chair of the Professional Agricultural Workers Conference, uh, PAWC, as many of you know it, uh, for many years. And as a matter of fact, that 360 degrees that we're talking about is really where Dr. Parker said that he visited and got the idea to form the Rural Life Conference. So those connections exist. He has been uh, chair of that committee for 26 years. And he has also worked with, uh, Na on the, as a director for the NASA Center for Food and Environmental Systems from Human Exploration of Space for 20 years, including sending two experiments into space. Dr. Hill is well accomplished. As you can see, he has 133 publications and two patents to his credit. Although he didn't start out in agriculture, it says here that uh, he uh, started out uh, with a degree from, um, let's see, Lake Forest College, a bachelor's degree in lake chemistry in lake, from Lake Forest College. And from there, he went on and continued in chemistry at the University of Chicago. Then he received a, a PhD degree from the University of, of uh, Illinois with further studies at the University of Arizona. Dr. Hill has served as in many capacities in the 1890 community, including chair of the Dean's Council and the director uh, of, well, the president, the director of the uh, ARD and APLU, which is the section's head for agriculture. He has been the dean at Tuskegee University for 30 years. So without further ado, let us welcome Dean Hill. Good morning, good morning. God be the glory and I was talking with uh, Reverend Thomas, trying to get the scripture right for this presentation. And uh, for Mark, uh, 
I'll just simplify it. Love God with all your heart. Love thy neighbor as thyself. We're going to come back to that theme, that neighbor as thyself, as I go through this presentation, and you'll see how we make that connection with your theme. I couldn't help but put Carver's picture as the first slide after I thought about your theme because he's so well known as a creator, innovator, par excellence, dealing with people, the Jessup wagon going to the families as well as the science and integrating all those pieces. We don't have many Carver's as we go forward. And I was talking to my son and my brother in preparation for this, and I'll make those connections, and, and my son was explaining some of the things he was doing, and one of the phrases he said, Dad, it's the team. It's the team. If I was gonna give a common title to what I'm gonna try to share with you today, I would use that, it's the theme. Before I get started, I wanna manifest that concept because I'm gonna push you a little bit today. And some of you in the audience, let me start with President Alexander, who I've been uh, fortunate sometime to have to sit in at the Council of Dean's me uh, President's meeting for the 1890s for my president. And a lot of the presidents, I just have to tell on them, kind of sit there and uh, sometimes minimally engaged. He is one of the spokespersons. His views are well known, well articulated, and he makes a difference. And because of that difference, that's why we have stability in our land grant funding. So I want to thank you, President Alexander, for taking that charge seriously and for keeping that together for the 1890s. You have a good president. There are friends in the audience who go back. We've done projects together. I'll touch on a couple of them. Uh, Leslie Glover and Iris Cole. Also, Dwayne Goldman is here from Monsanto. And I looked out in the audience, and I saw Horace and Al sitting there from Prairie View. And I just want to say hi to you. And I have to say one special hello for Jackie McCray. Jackie may not remember, but I was at some meeting here many, many years ago when I was a young whippersnapper and don't remember anything, and you awarded me with an Arkansas Traveler Award. I still have that, Jackie. Where's Jackie? Some, somewhere. Okay, hi. Just want to acknowledge you for all your years and brilliance and contribution, not only to UAPB, but to the land-grant system. Thank you so much. And to... Uh, Interim Dean Monharan, thank you for the invitation. And my other colleagues who are here, uh, there's so many scientists here who I've known over the years in the ministry. I just want to acknowledge you, those who worked on the SoftSec project, and uh, of course, Alton Thompson, who will be presenting later. So now having kind of put protocol in place, um, we come back, I, I, I I'm gonna talk about my dad and my granddad in, in just a minute. And I, I'm feeling something here today because uh, my brother did a histor historical study of our family and he made linkages that I didn't really know till more recently. And I said, well, what can I bring to this group? They're gonna hear all the articulate updates from Alton Thompson all the USDA programs and what the different groups are doing, said, what can I give that will be somewhat unique but share something from the heart? So where I'm coming today, I'm going to use four examples from 30 years as dean. And I'm going to separate that from the 40 years as in the, uh, being a part of the university professoriate, but 30 years of, as dean and what that could mean or may have meant. And I want to, uh, uh, the second line is stay connected to community, give God the glory, 
Now, those three, I'm going to end this presentation with those three because those are, have been really successful uh, formula, if you will, to be successful at an 1890 land grant and to give to others. Now, first quiz question for you is where did the next two lines come from? Can you read it? Can you see that? You can't see it. It says, the wise build bridges, the foolish build barriers. Where did that come from? Come on now, I mean, I mean, uh, President, I, I, I wouldn't ask you, but I would say this is a good quiz because the young people would know, any young people in here who would know where that might come from? Let me give you a hint. You may not have stayed through the whole movie. Black Panther, thank you. Black Panther. I've seen it three times, I'm gonna see it two more. And that kind of summarizes where we're going with the connection between technology and future and development and all those fabulous things, women and advancement. The wise build bridges, the foolish build barriers. Okay, my, my dad was a, my great grandfather was a slave and he joined the Union Army and he fought and uh, had an honorable discharge and, moved to Van, Arkansas, and then he had some children, and one of them, Andrew Henry Hill, attended UAPB. At that time, it was called Arkansas Branch Normal College. He graduated with honors. Uh, and then my dad, and I found from my brother that he farmed 100 acres. I didn't know that. Uh, that might have influenced my life when I was young, if I had just known that. Then my dad, uh, who uh, grew up in North Little Rock, Arkansas, graduated from UAPB. He graduated with honors. He was a history major. He played football and baseball, and he helped start the first jazz band as a trumpet. He used to walk around the house playing the trumpet, but he had to give it up because <clears throat> of the playing in all those joints. And he was called to be a minister. He had to choose. <laughs> but he still used to play that around the house sometime. And I was the third son, so when he moved to North Little Rock, he would go into the rural areas of Arkansas and recruit students for Shorter College. And he would take me with him because my grandmama had said I was gonna be the preacher. And so I'd go, I was a teenager, and we'd go to a church area, and he'd say, okay, son, you're on your own, make friends. And he'd go do what he had to do, he'd preach and he'd, so I was, first time I was, whoa, what is this? Out in very remote areas and what have you. But you know what, over time, that was such a gift he gave me with because I learned how to walk up to peers, hello, and then make acquaintance and talk to them. It was all this great food. And so I got to the point where I would look forward to going to the rural areas with him. And then when the students would be recruited and come to short, I, I would greet them, and some of them who were really exceptionally good workers, and they, they were fabulous young people, uh, they taught me how to work, because we had to do everything there. And that's one of our themes, we need to revive that. They had to do all the painting and lawn care, and uh, laying bricks and carpentry, and we used to work, oh, uh, in summer, whatever, work 10 hours a day, and my dad called himself paying me and it was something like, when I figured it out one day, it was like less than 30 cent an hour, a dollar a day or something like this. But what he was really doing was give me the opportunity to learn, and that really stuck with me. So let, let me share. So from the heart, I'm coming to you to make a, make a suggestion. It's a suggestion. The three first black astronauts here, back during that period, a little team got together and got the little sweet potato. And to make a long story short, we we'll funded about between one and $1.2 million a year for 15 years, right there at Tuskegee. To do what? You see the little stem cuttings there. They went up for two space flights. Because the first root crop 
that had gone in space, and it was successful, the science, the publications, the results, and as a result of the, just the dynamic occurring around that, sweet potato became a crop that was introduced into the diet at Johnson Space Center, so the whole food science department got involved in that piece. The whole engineering group got involved with the system to grow it and what have you, the chemists and the biologists and architecture and all of the agricultural components. It was a love fest for science. It was exciting and, and uh, the point I wanna make here is innovation is power, your theme. Don't take that word lightly. It's almost like I wanna, I wanna say, I did look at the posters and I wanna just give you one of my suggestions Drive it harder, push it harder. And we talk a little bit about how can you do that. Here's some of the students and some of the products that they develop in food. It was so exciting. Some became some commercial products and uh, those young ladies went on to do great things in life just inspired by this, this team. And there were patents and this was a, a picture here of, uh, uh, it was revolutionary in the sense that there was more mass per volume of sweet potato grown in these trays than anywhere else ever, and certainly with a hydroponic system. No soil is in there. Those were God gifts to the team. No one person did what came out of that. And of course, every year, every two, three years, intensive uh, analysis of, are you, do you deserve this money? <laughs> are you doing? You know, you're just under the microscope. And really, those were joyous times for us because the work was going so well, the review teams came and just came and tried to give us more. They just tried to give us more. So innovation and teamed innovation can drive resources and drive you to more resources and excitement. This was a part of the team. I'll say this is about one-fourth of the team here. You can see multi national in character, uh, gender equality, and this is not even the food science group and whatever. So you ha it's picking people with the right spirit. Each one of those individuals had a spirit that was so giving, so giving, such that when we'd be working on evening, nights, and weekends or whatever, the families would come. The children, the wives, the husbands would come and then cheer us on and work with us and that. So that's one example of innovation. It, I know you need money. I know you need money. Now, innovation is one part of it, and that's, that was internal within one university. This time I wanna share the second example of the SoftSec universities, which included in the second phase UAPB that cut across the southern states and here's where we worked together on projects funded by Kellogg at about three and a half, four million dollars. And I'll show you why this is important. The topics we dealt with was sustainable and ag food systems, which grew, and then uh, K through 12, institutional change and community and economic development. You can see the undergirding components there are what we still work on today. And out of that, so, so there was the project. Okay, so the project was good. Uh, Alton, who's speaking later, was a critical piece to it. You see some pictures of others who were involved in that. Uh, but I, the point I wanna make was that partnership that started with six and then had nine spun off projects. And one of the principles we established early Tuskegee was lead in the first one, but we said if we get other projects, we're gonna share the leadership. So when we got our next project, this one spun off uh, collaborative outreach uh, and uh, dealing with uh, financial capital. That was 1.8 million and that was, I think, Fort Valley would have been the leader of that one. Uh, the other one, the Southern Ag Biotech Consortium and Dwayne Goldman is in the audience. And this one where we work with teachers, work with small farmers, way back then, taking some vegetable crops, 
and letting farmers see what new technology could do to enhance uh, their production and manage weeds, et cetera, et cetera. We worked this all the way from K through 12 up into community, and it was a great success because we had those meetings where we brought the community together and the people espoused very clearly how they were ready for new technology if it could be presented to them. And that is continuing today. And then we expanded internationally. This is just one of the international projects, SABRAD, uh, where we brought all of the 1890s. See, what I want to say is we started with six, we got to nine. When we did this project and went to Ghana and brought in scientists from all across Africa to deal with biotech issues, led by the 1890s. We had the flag ceremonies, the states and all the countries, all the uh, USDA officials were there. It was a phenomenal event that came out of that collective leadership. We could not have pulled it off. Again, uh, I have to apologize for this. I did, but I just want to make this, I'll just bypass these two slides and what they show is for Tuskegee, what happened there was those who were involved in these projects are still there and highly productive. They found a place, they found reward, they got financially, they won the campus awards, they published so many papers, had so many students. You didn't see many people leaving Tuskegee. And that, the, the force of this giving and working together is powerful. And then the second slide has to do with those who were at Tuskegee and went other places. And those who were at the other 1890 land grants who were involved. And I'll tell you, it's changing now, but uh, Ms. President, they had m many of the leadership of the 1890s, the deans, et cetera, et cetera, came out of this group. And part of why we were able to do that was we also trained leaders. Kellogg ran a constant series of training sessions where people would go from each university in teams and get new concepts on how to listen, how to work and pay, how to do this. We traveled to Mexico, see what others were doing. It was a life-giving experience that lasted 10 years. That SoftSec project lasted 10 years. So we were undergirding and developing those leaders all that time. So now what ends up happening is one reason why Alton Thompson is here. If you look at, uh, can you see any of that? You can see, okay. So just two arrow, two, two pathways. The first pathway is we have an 1890 University Foundation. And I'm just going to, because I'm from Arkansas, I'm just going to say this so the 1890 presidents will know where this came from because they don't know. The reason we could have an 1890 foundation and with this, uh, the way it's designed, is led by presidents. You have two presidents, you have two deans, you have two research directors, you have two extension administrators. For those of you who know the land grant system and how money flows and how we're structured, that's impossible to get done, but it's necessary to move forward. It is within the context of SoftSec that we experimented with a group that had the presidents as the head the uh, vice provost, the provost and vice presidents, they had a council, then the deans, then the scientists, and we worked it. Because of the environment of Kellogg, it allowed us the opportunity to have those groups meeting periodically so the presidents knew everything that was going on. The provost understood and could communicate with the president about it. So therefore, we got full support and that's why we're able to do it. Even the President's Council led to some uh, uh, APLU documents that still stand the test of time, like engagement and things like this. And then the 125th anniversary, as you, those of you who were participating in it, if you think back, how did we actually accomplish the centers? Well, there was leadership, but amongst the leadership group were people who had been seated through SoftSec over years, and it was like you could look at each other and they got it. 
you know, it, it helped everybody as the 1890 move it forward. We didn't fuss for 18 years, 18 months we worked on those documents and presented. And let me tell you, we were smart this time because we asked for about $37 million. It's just that they messed up. I don't want to get in that. You were, Mr. President, you were there. They, I'm not going to say they lied. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to hold myself back, Walt. Hold back, hold back. Because our time is going to come. It's going to come. But one of the things that is good, we didn't stop. So now in the Farm Bill, through the university's foundation, they now have a request for $125 million. Alton, I don't know if you're going to talk about that and share that. But all that goes back to your roots. It goes back to a continuum of believing in yourself, knowing what you can do. Now, the society's got to get with it, because the point I'm making is that we can do things to conquer the world, just like Carver did, just like the NASA project. But we have to have the resources. And that's the piece where these other pieces, leadership piece fits in. I won't go in the second half, but the second half is what transformed Tuskegee University. And then, uh, let's deal with our small farmer for just a second. I'm not gonna dwell on this. Same crops, uh, collards, watermelons, zucchini, purple hull peas, refrigeration, packing, uh, Walmart, Kroger, or now Whole Foods, or, or, and then your own individual customers uh, on the shelf, uh, now marketing center, we're developing that so we can be competitive with Gap, and you get your, your, you go through your years and you get a certain amount uh, packaged, and, and then, then here's where I want to just pause. We all know the issues that don't allow optimization for small farmers to consistently get a profit or make a profit. And so we're on it. We're on it in our individual states. And we've cut across through the foundation, et cetera. We're working across states trying to get it together. I'm going to put a pin down here and say we're going to have to push this harder. We're pushing hard. But we've got to push hard. We've, we've got to do some other things. It cannot just be ag. We learned this the hard way. You have to get your technology people, your business people, all your different disciplines. And they have to, and people who are politically savvy, who can work the legislature and Farm Bureau, that all has to become a part of the team. I guess Alton will cover that the Secretary's Rural Development Program, if you read it, you see how they're focusing on small farmers now? Do you see that? It's almost verbatim our language. I want you to check that out. Check how that paragraph reads and go back to what we had. And I know 30 years in, I've seen, and this is why I'm going to come to my brother here. I'm so glad he's here, Dr. D.Q. Fields, because I've been watching D.Q. Fields just 20 miles down the road, know his dad, a dynamic gentleman, whatever. What a great opportunity. What an amazing opportunity. But also, before I go to my grave, I'm going to watch and see if you hold to your word. Now, here's, I'm putting it to him. He's a good brother. He doesn't deserve anything negative. He earned what he's getting. But you just have to watch one thing. They're always talking about this in the uh, Manfred, the uh, case they're doing with Trump and all that. What do they say? Watch the what? Watch the money. Watch the money. Partnerships, as we saw when we worked together, where we could have 1.2 million a year or 3.5 and go, that's the kind of money UAPB needs to move to the next level. University of Arkansas has it, has had it, will continue to get it. What would be new if some of that gets shared in a real dynamic way that pushes UAPB toward its optimum? And what we learned from B.D. Mayberry going way back we don't want any of University of Arkansas's money. That allowed the 1890s to get the first set of, of money we have for formula funds by saying, we don't want their money. We don't want their money. We want our money. So they just add to the pot. So if, you, if you're getting two billion, and I can say this because I leave the state now, no harm feeling. <laughs> if you're getting 20 billion, you know, Hey, add 
make it $22, $25 billion and give that five to UAPB, you would then go down in history. That's your legacy. That would be the piece to and, and lead that for all of the states. You, God has put you in a fabulous position with your background and whatever, man. And I didn't know I was going to get this opportunity, but with you guys, I said, oh, Lord, yeah. Thank you. That is what I really came for. Sometimes God sends you somewhere you don't know why you go, you know. But that is what I can give you. Uh, I'm, this, this is my last slide, I believe. Uh, just a few wrap-up ones. I want to I wanna do this, though. This is the fourth example. We now have, I think, three or four PhD programs, and you probably have several PhD programs. I'm not sure. But what I want you to do is, if you are creating new graduate programs, make them innovative. Don't do what's already done. UA, University of Arkansas has all those things covered, and you gotta fight through the state stuff to get them up there and all have. So we created Integrative Biosciences, the best thing we ever did in our lives. You can find what fits you right, but we went across the whole campus and got all the talent. All of a sudden, instead of having 10, 20 people like that, we had 60, 65 awesome PhDs. We, we, whoa, all in the same room, the equipment that's all scattered, the ability to write proposals and the student synergy. And let me tell you, here, there's a lot of things that happen when this happens. Number one, you get the student, the advanced students for three, four years, don't you? They help you teach, they help you do research, they help you publish, they help you be ambassadors, both across other universities, across the world. That's an advantage the 1862s have, is those big PhD programs where they turn all the work over to those people who get paid like minimum wage and work like dogs so they can get that accomplishment. It's, we all went through it, so we all know what it is. Hey, let's give UAPB some of that, some more of that. If you got some already, let's get some program. And you don't have to go hire a whole bunch of new people and pay all this stuff. Look for the strengths that you already have, leverage them together, and just go to work. Step out there. Once we did it, got people in the room, start working, those juices start flowing. That's what I'm trying to talk about. The juices start flowing when this synergy and innovation starts coming. All of a sudden, you don't even know who you have anymore. Is that still you? Yes, the people are ready to be awakened. This, they, they, I know some of the brilliant people who've been here for years and years. Give them an opportunity to wake up and use all that genius cutting across. So in the summary, uh, again, your graduate programs, we've got to do more. So I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to find somebody at Tuskegee, hook up with somebody at UAPB, and do a grant in something we're not already doing. There's, there's some niche that the two, three, four of you, if you got together, it will be a natural move. And maybe we'll bring another university or two in it or not. Some will be with University of Arkansas, some just with 1890. Do both of them. I see Goldman looking at his watch. He tell me to sit down. So I come back to my first slide. It takes a team. The part about community is we increased the 1890 money. When you go back and do a timeline around when we got jumps in money, when there was movement among the African-American people. You need to hear this. When we jumped in the 60s or so, when there was movement for rights, that's when Congress was sensitized and we got the leaps. I have a slide set that actually shows you this. Don't underestimate your connection to community. Respect the community. Find out their needs and actually help them work that because when the time is right, they're going, they're going to be ones who actually help you get that that leap forward that UAP need, PB needs. We need University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. You all uh, uh, got my daddy and his brother and all my family off to a great start. Uh, all my classmates, not all of them, but a lot of them went to school here. 
I don't know why my daddy didn't bring me back down here because I might have gone to school. He never, he never even said anything about it, you know, so I feel, uh, anyway, I've given a little bit back today. And remember, be builders, don't build barriers. I just want to say, the other day, a person did something very bad to us, and USDA helped them. Now, it, w it was really dirty what they tried to do. But thank God, I, on the phone with USDA, I said, hold it. Put that in writing. If you think you can do what you're saying, and I think I know the policy, you send that to me in writing first before you write any notes from this minute. And then we will see what we can do. They back down real quick. There's evil and dirt around. There are people here to hold you back, to tell you you can't do things, and try to tell you to do things out of selfish motives that they have. You have to have a connection to God. You have to have a connection to the Creator in your own way to protect yourself and move this thing forward. If I leave with anything else, Make sure you bring that in. And let me tell you, I know you have to be careful because you're public, but ministers can find ways. You can find a way to pray that doesn't break the law. And you need to invoke that power in everything that you do. Amen. On behalf of the School of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Human Sciences, it's my pleasure and honor to present this medallion to Dr. Walter Hill for presenting Simon Alexander Halley Memorial Lecture. Dr. Hill. It is really my pleasure to be here to talk about um, the Rural Life Conference uh, dedication. Uh, when I was looking back in the program this morning and seeing when we started to first give out this award, I think I've only missed about two of them. So it's really an honor for me this morning to have this opportunity to be the one to recognize our honoree today. And each year, the Rural Life Conference Dedication Committee nominates an individual or individuals, and we su submit the name to the Rural Life Conference uh, Task Force for consideration. Honorees are, cho are chosen based on their contributions to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff School of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Human Sciences for improving the quality of life for people in the community we, that community connection you talked about, Dr. Hill. So that is what most of this is based on. Uh, this year's honoree spanned a career of, of 36 years when he retired in January of this year. His career began when he participated in a cooperative education experience with the National Resources Conservation Service, NRCS. During his career, he served as a soil conservationist in nine counties. He was a district conservationist and a resource conservationist on the state staff located in Little Rock. Uh, in this position, he served as NCRS liaison with the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff and Arkansas Land and Farm Development Corporation. In 2008, he was appointed the first African-American assistant state conservationist for programs in the NRCS for Arkansas. Our recipient has received numerous awards and recognition throughout his distinguished career. Uh, some of them include the Chester S. Durley Award, the Carpenter Family Award, and the 50th Year Rural Life Conference Award. Our recipient is a member of several organizations, which include a life member of the Natural Resources Conservation Services Employee Organization and a member of both the American and United States Tennis Association. I wonder if he still plays tennis. 
He is president and board member of the Lee Sports Foundation and the National Heritage Foundation for Youth Development, which serves both um, Pine Bluff and Malvern, Arkansas. Our recipient and his wife, Lakita, have been married for 34 years. They have two children, Cameron and Kenneth Jr., and their daughter-in-law, Benika. They have three grandchildren, Kaylin, Kyla, and Carrington. And I know they are the joy of your life. I know about grandchildren. Uh, would, would the family please stand? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the recipient of the 2018 Rural Life Conference Dedication Award, Mr. Kenneth L. Lee. Would you please come forward, Mr. Lee? Thank you all. Uh, this is indeed an honor. Um, you know, most people that know me, I, I'm not shy for words, but it, it's, it's kind of tough this time. Uh, you know, first of all, I'd like to thank God who all things are possible. And as you saw my family, you know, that's my joy. I couldn't do anything without them. Uh, I really want to thank the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff because not only have they honored me with this, they provided me the education that I needed in order to do the things that I've done. And so I owe them double. Uh, I like to thank my agency because through USDA and RCS, I wouldn't have been in the position to do the things that I accomplished for the university. So I would like to thank them as well. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the 62nd Annual Rural Life Conference Planning Committee, uh, I want to thank all of you uh, for your coming here, for your contribution. Uh, if you're presenting, if you're attending, we have uh, several people in the audience. And I want, we want to let you know that uh, our success is, is because of you. And uh, we once again want to thank you.